Hello and welcome everyone to this tutorial where we are going to build a real-time chat application based on GraphQL subscriptions. And actually it's not only a chat application but users are also um, able to view their own location and the locations of all the other chat participants in real time on a map as we can see here in the UI of the application. Let's now take a very quick look at the data model that we need for this chat application. So at first we have the traveler and the traveler uh, has a name, uh, it has a location, so that's a one-to-one -one relationship and then it also has a couple of messages. These are all the messages that the traveler sent. A message it basically only has the content that is called text and the send by property that represents the traveler that sent the message and then we also have a location that consists of a latitude and the longitude and is associated with the traveler. Alright, so as we can see we already have a fully fledged UI for our chat. On the right side we see the messages and then here we have the map where we can also drag around to, to find other participants. At the moment we've got three participants on the map. But the UI at the moment is static, so it's not a real-time chat. And that really is not very compelling. Imagine you want to participate in the chat with a message, but you actually don't see the message appear. So this is exactly the use case for GraphQL subscriptions, so that we don't have to go and refresh the page, as I'm doing now, but rather we would get the update right away without having to refresh the page. So this is what we understand when we're talking about real-time functionality and that's exactly what we can implement using GraphQL subscriptions. So GraphQL subscriptions are a feature that allow you to get these real-time updates from the database in your GraphQL backend. So before we actually go and implement the real-time functionality in our application, I want to show you how you can use subscription from inside a playground. So right here I've specified a subscription and in fact this is a su subscription that will always fire um, when a mutation uh, happens on the traveler model type. Remember that a subscription is a way to get informed when a mutation happens on a particular model type. So because we don't know what kind of mutation is actually going to happen, we can include the mutation field in the payload of our um, subscription. So here we will get the information whether a new traveler was created, an existing traveler was updated, or maybe deleted. And then we can also get the information about the updated um, about the updated traveler or the new traveler and we get that information from the node and then we call the properties of our traveler model type which were ID, name and then it also had a location and the latitude and the longitude and this is exactly the data that I want to have returned when this um, subscription fires. We can start the subscription by just clicking on the play button as we used to. And now we only see this little loading spinner on the right side. And that is because we only see actual data whenever a mutation is happening in the backend. So I've prepared a couple of mutations right here in different tabs. Let's start with the create traveler mutation. So right here I have a mutation where we are going to create a new traveler that is called Cool Tomato. And its location is in Paris. So these are the coordinates of Paris. Let me now go ahead and fire this mutation and then we go back to the subscription tab and see if that um, changed anything there. So I play the mutation. We see that uh, the traveler has probably been created. And now let's go back to the uh, subscription tab where we in fact see that we now got exactly the payload that we expected, that we specified right here, we now see being returned on the right side here. And so we see that it was in fact a created mutation that happened. So we added a new node, a new traveler node to our backend. The name is Cool Tomato, and this is the location that we specified as well. Let's now take a look at the update mutation, where we update the name of a traveler. And for an update mutation, it might be convenient to know what the previous values of the updated fields were. And for that, we can actually include a new field here in the payload of the subscription that is called previous values. 
And in here, we can access the properties of the node that was updated. So here, this is the tra traveler. So we can actually um, retrieve the old ID and the old name. In this case, we're only going to change the name. So let me go ahead and restart the subscription to make sure that this is also included here. And now let's go and use the update mutation that I've prepared. So I'll copy the ID of the traveler of the cool tomato that we just created. I'll paste it in here into the update traveler mutation and we'll give it a new name and that is weird broccoli. Let's send the mutation. We see that it successfully happened. But now let's see what we got back from our subscription. And in fact, again, we see that uh, the traveler has been updated this time, so the mutation field this time uh, contains the string updated. And then also we get the new values, the new name of the traveler that we specified, as well as the old name as I promised here in previous values. And finally we have a deleted mutation, so let's take a, let's take a look at what that looks like. I'll copy the ID of our traveler again, head over to the prepared delete traveler mutation, just paste in the ID, send the mutation. And after a little while, we see that uh, the mutation has been successful. We deleted the traveler. And in our subscription, we actually see the same. So we received the mutation this time that was of type deleted. And then the node will always be null in a deleted mutation but you have still the opportunity or you, you can still go and access the, the data of the node that was deleted by including the previous values field. All right, so next I want to show you how we can integrate subscriptions in the actual chat application. And for that, we are going to use the Apollo client. So let me switch over to my IDE where we are currently already using the Apollo client. But as I said before, um, at the moment, the chat application is only static. So we are only able to see new messages whenever we refresh our page. Let's change that and integrate subscriptions. And the first thing we have to do for that is to um, instantiate a subscription client. And we get this from the subscriptions transport WebSocket package that you can install using NPM or Yarn. So we have to instantiate the client by passing the URL that it should connect to. And that is actually a different URL than you're using for your uh, regular uh, GraphQL uh, endpoint um, because the uh, subscriptions are implemented using WebSockets. So the URL will look a little bit different, but notice that the end of both URLs represent the ID of your project. All right, you can also pass more, um, more parameters to the subscription client when instantiating it. So here we are telling it that whenever it gets disconnected, it should just reconnect. <clears throat> what we have to do then is we have to um, combine the, um, the WebSocket client that we just instantiated with the network interface. And then we're passing uh, the combination of these to the Apollo client when we instantiate it. So let's go ahead and combine them, and we're do, doing that by using the add GraphQL subscriptions function that we also import from the subscriptions transport WebSocket package. So let's call it our network interface with subscriptions, and then use the add GraphQL subscriptions function. We're passing in the subscription client and our current network interface. And now all we have left to do is to replace the current network interface with the network interface with subscriptions. So that's all we need to do in order to prepare our application to actually use subscriptions and get real time updates from our database. All right, so now that we've prepared and um, instantiated the Apollo client, we can actually go ahead and use subscriptions in our application. And the first thing I want to do is implement the real-time functionality for the chat so that the users see the messages that they send right away rather than having to refresh the page. So let's move our, over to our chat component. And right here, we've got um, one mutation and one query prepared. 
So initially we are going to load all the messages including the text and the traveler that sent it and we also have a create message mutation prepared so that when the user hits the send button or hits enter that we can actually send the um, message that they created to our backend. And then I wrapped um, our chat component with the mutation and the query that I just showed. Um, so now inside the component we have access to um, this query and this mutation through the props of the component. And inside componented mount is actually where we are going to set up the subscription. And what we want to do is we want to listen to um, new messages that are coming in. So we are particularly interested in created mutations. And what I didn't show you in the playground is that you can actually apply a filter on the mutation field that is being returned. So rather than having the mutation field included in the, play, uh, in the payload, we can um, filter and we can uh, specify upfront which are the mutations that we're actually interested in. So right here, I'm telling um, the Apollo client that I'm only interested in created mutations. And then I specify the payload, so this is all the information I expect uh, to uh, receive when a new message is created. I want to know the text, I want to know the date when it has been created, and um, the person who sent it. And then I can also specify what should happen um, when this um, mutation is actually uh, triggered. So um, for that, there is the opportunity to pass the update query argument to uh, the subscribe to more function. And the update query um, function works in the same way as a Redux reducer, if you're familiar with that. So it will take in the previous state, which are the query results that we got um, the last time for the all messages query. And then the subscription data, which is the payload that uh, we specified right here. And then we can say how this data should be um, combined in order to form the new result of the all messages query so that the data in the cache can get updated properly. And in fact, what I'm doing here, I'll just retrieve the new message from the subscription data. And then I'll um, append it to the um, already existing messages, um, creating a new array. And this new array will be passed um, in the return value as the value for the all messages property. With this subscription in place, we can just go ahead and test it. So I'll navigate back to the um, user interface of the application. I'll refresh the page once more so that we make sure that the, the, the changes in the code actually apply. And now I'll go ahead and write something in our chat. Hello, everyone. And now we see my message appear right away rather than having to refresh the page in order to see it.